Hi, and welcome to Conversations About Money. This is going to be our third conversation about money and purpose. And Holly Woods is back with me again for this. So welcome, Holly, and thank you for joining me again. And uh, we are going to start with the topic of courage. We were just having a conversation um, a few minutes ago before I hit record and we landed on this topic of courage and the kind of courage that I feel that we need to have in today's world to do what we know is right or feel is right or will take us in a direction that is good for the world, is good for humanity, is good for nature, is good for all the things that that it needs to be good for. And I think that courage is special because it can very often feel as though there is so much that's pushing in other directions that it's really easy to feel small or like just not enough to make a difference. And so I want to explore with you, Holly, this concept of courage, which is a word that's used a lot, but I feel needs to be really unpacked because we tend to go back to our old stories of heroes. When we think courage, it's like, oh, I've got to be brave like a guy on the battlefield. It's like I'm the last person in the world who's carrying swords and shields and things like that. How, how, how do we make courage work in today's world that, that's actually effective? You know, it's fascinating as you were speaking um... And I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this today. But, I mean, I'm having so many conversations with leaders and executives and entrepreneurs who are feeling very much the pressure and stress of the world we're living in. And, you know, living in the zeitgeist of, you know, we've all got to start doing things somewhat differently because it's not working. <laughs> all indicators point to it's not working. And yet the cultural milieu just keeps sweeping us along um, in the same direction. You know, there isn't a, a demarcation of what has been and, oh, we all must go in the opposite direction now. It's like we're all, you know, some of us are like steadfastly, I got to do things differently, yet don't have either the wherewithal, the skills, the talents, the capacity or the courage. And I've been thinking about what, what that means. And I, th I think don't, you know, the etymology of the word courage is from the heart. And we often think of courage as you, as you described it as willpower and force and, you know, putting, getting a sword and shield and somehow thinking or, or thinking our way through it, right? And really it's, it's an opening of the heart to say, I know what's right and I know what I must do. And, and feeling that so sincerely with, I mean, just deep sincerity and a purity of um, this is this is where I must go because I believe so strongly in how I want to be and how I want to be in the world, that it generates um, an enthusiasm and inspiration to live into that which is mine to do. And it feels like that's a, that's, you know, a, a version, a kind of courage that is now required of us. It's, it's not the willful, overpowering, um, dominating force that one used to think of courage. It's, it's the sincere, from the heart, I am doing what's right, what I know is right in my heart and soul because now now is the time now i must show up as me as as what matters to me i've just realized why it is that our old models of courage are so unappealing because they were actually always about killing the enemy <laughs> and uh, that's a long shot what, whatever enemy you perceive in today's world um, i just started listening to an audio book that's about ai it would be very easy to see that as a potential massive enemy we can see power structures as enemies there are many ways we can see enemies in today's world or we can see just the cultural kind of lag the mm -hmm. the this there's a sort of cultural apathy in a way and and, and helplessness i think and a relying on, on authority that, that creates this very 
slow change and that often feels to me like an enemy it just feels like oh my goodness everything moves too slowly people feel too disempowered and it's 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 hard but but if we let go of having to kill the opposition <laughs> it actually makes that that changes the whole thing i think that and it's really important to name that because i i i hadn't seen that i just it made me realize why so often these hero stereotypes just come up and that's what makes us feel so small it's like well i'm just not that kind of hero but so so we can get rid of that what i think's also really beautiful is that when we open our heart this is something I remember exploring around the topic of willpower. I think what happens is our true willpower actually opens up, which is, and you described it perfectly. You, you said, you know, there's something that we know is right to do. There's a will there. And that will is not just the will of I want to do it, but I will do it. I'm going to do it. So there's a commitment. There's a decision that's made in there. And because we open our heart to that, there's a power that then comes to us, which is a different kind of power. It's not the kill all. I'm. It's it's not that kind of old fashioned type of mastery of defense and attack. It's a newer kind of inner mastery that translates into an outer mastery. We have to get better and better at the things we do in the outer world, whether it's business or campaigning or whatever it is. But it's fueled by um, a different kind of fire. I think. And it's also fueled by a fire that's stoked. It's rather like um, a wood burning stove. You know, you, you have to top it up. If you want to keep it running, you have to top it up every day. It's not like a massive bonfire that you build once a year. It's a stove that you keep warm all the time. And so we have these moments of courage on a very frequent basis. That's what I notice. I often have to just stop and say, OK, I'm going to do this. I, I, it's it's not automatic. It, it's something that I have to personally, consciously engage in really regularly. Well, I love what you just described as in, you know, we, we have to stoke our internal fire. And one of the ways I know I do that is to, and, you know, partly I learned this with you is the, the following of the energy. So where is where am I deriving the free flow of my energy right now? That which inspires me, that which truly is my life force. And in some ways, that is the heart opening. Our heart opens to that which is inspired in us is the breath of life. And so I'm mixing metaphors here, but I, I do feel that, you know, the sort of daily, the, the daily form of our courage, you know, the courage with a small C that shows up every moment of every day. Do I have enough courage to do this next task, which I know is just one small step in the larger vision I may hold for my life. But I, for me to find the courage to do the things throughout the day that I may not feel ready to do, I may not feel capable, I might not do it well, um, I may be, have fear about it, or I may not really, you know, like maybe something I actually dislike. Um, that too is courage, you know. And, and that is the very gritty reality. Like people often say to me, oh, I want to live in this grace and, and flow and ease and things <laughs> like that. And I think we've probably talked about this already. And, and I always say, you know what? wherever you are you know there are emails to be written and you might not feel like writing an email right now I often don't feel like writing an email and there's just stuff to be done and we're all doing more or less the same stuff we write stuff and we have conversations and we do whatever the thing is that we do with whatever our craft is really um, I don't think we're so enormously different I do think we make different decisions and that's where the courage comes in what decision do I make do I make the decision to say I'm not going to do it because it sometimes like, oh, I don't really feel like it, but but I know that it's the right thing to do. So and that's even that's really interesting with the energy, because sometimes the energy is I don't feel like it. But there's an energy that comes when you say I'm going to do it anyway. Sometimes I'll say I value myself and my health and well-being more. And so I'm going to leave this till tomorrow. And I'm often in a you know, that's another little moment where I have to discern what's actually the right thing to do here. I don't really know the answer, 
But I know that if I constantly make one decision, like constantly override my health and well-being, or constantly support my health and well-being so much that I never do any of the bigger things and never, never really step out, I know that that's not going to work. Right. And so the the mix of you know, I, I actually had a have a client um, who's been quite confused about this notion of flow um, because I helped him experience you know very distinctly what it was like. And then he had this misconception that to be in flow, you actually just have to be in this free floating, <laughs> you know, blissful state. And, and like, all the time. People... No, that's, that's actually <laughs> not it because you can be, you know, you can be working pretty hard, getting a lot of stuff done and be in flow. And so there, there is a learning process to, to how do we structure our lives and how do we pay attention to the current reality, you know, am I experiencing a serious block and do I have some limiting beliefs and need to shift, do some mindset work? And so maybe this task isn't the best thing for me to do right now, even though it would be courageous, I can set that aside and maybe tackle it tomorrow when I'm in a better place. And I'll do this, that feels a little more, a little easier, more graceful for me to accomplish right now. Making that decision is courageous because I'm not telling myself I have to effort and force my way through this and get it done regardless. As you talked about health and well-being, it's like I'm paying attention to what I feel truly capable of doing in this moment. That too is courage. I, I feel like courage is paying attention to what is alive in us and how can we best utilize the energy and resources that we do have in order to be most effective. And maybe I'm going to be more effective tomorrow and can tackle that with no problem. So courage then links with consciousness um, because, very because nice. courage in a way is that moment where you opt to be conscious rather than run on a default program. Yeah. And, and so where you actually stop and you ask a good question or you, you make a decision like based on some kind of awareness, like you, you don't just do whatever you were going to do like a machine. You, you engage in the moment and you ask yourself what would be the really valuable thing to do here. It, it's in there that the courage sits, isn't it? Because the easy thing to do is just do whatever you were going to do or to say, oh, I don't feel like it. I won't do it rather than I don't feel like it. But should I do it anyway or should I do this? Or should I do that? Like, what are my options here? And and there's a sensing then. We, we've talked already about sensing in our previous conversations. Then we start to sense into the options and all these other skills come in about what would actually be the, the decision that feels really good in this fuller sense, not feels good in a, a sort of um, cheap, cheap sense, like just whatever I can get away with, but is a full sense of feeling good. And I think this is really important because again, I think we often feel like, oh, well, I deserve to feel good or I have the right somehow to feel good. But actually those fuller feeling good moments, those fulfilling moments happen because we opt for that. Right. Because we're putting ourselves in the world in creating a, you know, our life force is flowing and therefore it continues to expand and the feeling good becomes more, a more dominant experience because we're feeding it. You yes. Know, so it, if you haven't been courageous and really put yourself in the world in you know, very purposeful, intentional ways and found flow in your work, it takes sometimes really small moments, small bold, I call them small bold steps of stepping into something that might be challenging, might be a little scary and finding the satisfaction and the meaning of those small steps and then building on it. I, I think that it, it also translates to larger decisions about how we're in the world, what our, what our products look like, products or services. And you know what is it that, that really brings me alive? What do I enjoy? delivering or making or creating or putting out in the world. And in that way, I am being more courageous because I'm, I'm offering something that is alive of me, from me. And, you know, how am I going to deliver that? And what are the mechanisms? And, and does that also live in the courageous realm? If I'm just 
relegated to creating funnels or you know whatever whatever it is that somebody's told me I'm supposed to do in order to be please no like like oh that feels so awful why would I do that <laughs> you know it's it's courage to say no I'm not using the old systems I'm not going to deliver things in the old way because for me that would be deadening I would just die um, and then it takes courage to face the the failures I try something new and it doesn't work and I try something and like did it how well did it work and I can't compare and th there are so many moments and I think one of the things that's really important here it's easy to think that other people have courage because they appear to you and I've had this experience a lot they appeared to me to be doing some, something much bigger than I was and therefore I thought wow that takes real courage or they've already got masses of courage but I don't have it because I'm too small I just come back to this I think that all of us probably feel too small at the moment if we're awake at all I, I think you could be running something absolutely huge and maybe you work with more uh, leaders operating probably at a higher level often than I do in the face of the kinds of changes that we're making probably for all of us we have these moments of courage it doesn't matter what le perceived level you're at it's kind of like we're all facing the same thing here yeah and, and it feels doesn't it feel to you like it's i mean for me at least it's it's partly because of the sense of oh my gosh we're behind the curve and i so want to make enough difference that it might help us catch up and and literally, I, you know, this for me, this is courage. I've had to throw out the notion of urgency of any kind. I just, I, can, I cannot really limit myself anymore. And so for me, courage is I'm, I am just, I'm in the belief I have enough time. There is enough time to do whatever it is I'm here to do. And it will, it will make the difference that's intended. And I, I, I will be enough. And, and, and there is a real, um, pressure point in there mm -hmm. because that urgency can come time and time again uh, that and and time and time again i've found that need because i it it's so clear that it doesn't work it's so clear that it's urgent and it's so clear that being urgent doesn't work and i know this also from healing it can be really urgent and if you never have that sense of urgency you might never find the strength inside to do it peacefully um, which is, I think, an interesting thing. So there's, an, I, there's nothing wrong with feeling the urgency, but I suspect we will all find that if we want to do something really well and be effective, we need to be peaceful, whatever the urgency is. And we need to be not immune to the urgency. It's almost like I know that urgency, but I know something more, which is how to be peaceful, t totally peaceful in a totally urgent situation. Well, it's that relaxation again. Um, yeah. So, so I, I literally made a bold claim a couple of weeks ago. I'm completely taking the word urgent out of my vocabulary. I, I will only be talking about it as a, as a demonstration of I'm gotten, gotten rid of it. And um, I know what's going on in the world around me. I read everything and you know, we're, we are now at a, at a point at which there may be no return um, according to the latest reports <laughs> and like, well, Okay, so my work now is going to be focused on joy and trust and magic, you know, <laughs> like, we're all going to do what we can do as boldly and courageously as we can from the purity of our hearts and, you know, living as with as much meaning as possible and creating community, like, all, like all the other things that are a byproduct of the work you and I do in the world. They're because they, I, I sense they're even more important now, the byproducts that weren't necessarily my original intention in doing the work I do. Maybe now that's more important than ever, that the things that we seek as humans just natively, um, you know, some of us are really driven to have impact and driven to, to want to improve humanity and et cetera. And, I just, you know, urgency now out of the picture. Okay, so what if we're just here to have fun? What if we're here just to create joy? What if we're here to um, build trust and co and connection and belonging and 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 I and so anything I would do would be in that realm, and therefore everything I do is going to have more meaning and more impact, right? <laughs> because I'm 
<laughs> suddenly let go of any urgency. <laughs> I'm just going to have fun doing everything I do now. <laughs> and and uh, one of the things that I have reflected on so often is what would be the point? Like if we, let's say we collectively, the, the direction shifts. It seems like we have an opportunity for that. There's a, there's a, there's a sense from many different traditions that we are genuinely in a time where it is possible to shift in the way that we feel is the right way. If we did that by being incredibly serious and virtually killing ourselves, burning out and um, utterly urgent, with everything that I know about energy, and it's a long, long time that I've been studying and learning about energy now, what I know is we would, we'd actually fail in the attempt. And like, it, it's, it, it doesn't actually make sense. Because yeah. everyone talks about, well, I want to live in a world where there's more joy and things like that. Well, then that's the thing, because you said a little earlier, people feel they don't have the resources, or they don't have the wherewithal, or they don't have the whatever it is they need to, to, to take the next step. And one of the things that I'm really learning is that we always do have mm -hmm. the things we need to take the next step. What we don't have is to the things we need to take the next 10 steps or 20 steps. And in our old ways of planning businesses, we would plan out, people would make a 10 year plan or a 20 year plan, and then they would kind of resource it all out. But once you're more energetically aware and you're very much in this more emerging, evolving way of creating a business, things can change quite radically. Not, and of course, this was always true in a way, but it was much more controlled. Now there's this sense of life conspiring with us to make things work in ways that are potentially much more beautiful than we imagined. I've had a lot of those experiences. If you have the whole thing planned out, you then have to kind of try to squeeze everything into this channel that you've tracked out for it. And that would feel like a, a travesty of life. That, that would be like trying to, trying to control life rather than let it work its wonders through you. And so I, what I see more, we really do have the resources in front of us, usually astonishingly in front of us. We often don't see them. Yeah. Um, or where we are and for our next steps. I think this is a really important thing because if you can do that, those little steps of courage, it's like, oh, here's this one, let's take this, let's use this, let's um, ask this person to help. Yeah, I mean, courage takes a different form than if we are, if we are open enough to imagine that I only really need to take this one step and then the next, because I don't know what's after that. That is our, that is our, that our, our truth. And our future is navigating uncertainty will require us to pay attention to what is here right now and, and what is that step and do i have the open heart and i am sp inspired by my life force to take that step and trusting that the next step will emerge as i move into that one looking around for all the resources that will show up for sure to enable me to take that next step and etc cetera, etc cetera, you know over and over and over again and that is a form of courage, um, intentional, purpose-driven courage that we're not used to taking because we so, and we we get afraid, we anticipate calamity or failure or, um, you know, we, we have such notions of dark, monstrous things living in uncertainty as opposed to, you know, the universe conspiring on our behalf and if you just open the door and show up oh my gosh what's going to what you elicit by your engagement with life when you show up alive you are eliciting support because life is going to resonate with your aliveness so and so this is where one of the skills that i again we've mentioned already but it comes in so strongly because what I found, what I found, is really important to replace that long-term strategy. Um, is the ability to sense into what's being created, mm -hmm. and very often I have very few of the details. It's like I used to walk in mountains a lot, and I lived in a place where you could often see the top of the mountain, so I could see where I was going to walk to. 
the walk up the mountain. But most of the walk, I couldn't see it at all. Now, in a way, the mountain is a very old model, but there's something value, valuable about that because what you need to do on the way up the mountain has nothing to do with the top of the mountain, except that it's taking you towards it. But if you didn't know there was a place that you were heading towards, and for me, it was always there's this fantastic moment when you see the view from the top. And But it's not really about a moment in, in terms of strategy and business and and our plans for the future. What I what I now do is it's like I sense the whole thing and I'm constantly doing that. So I'm constantly working out, you know, what's the next step? And this, this next step might be going to take us six months. It's not only what I'm doing today, like I'm. I'm often working with this, what are we on now? We're on this piece. This is what where our main focus is. But it's always in the context of this whole experience, which is about way more than me. That's an experience for us. It's an experience for everyone who's involved with the business and everyone beyond that who's touched by the impact of it. And I'm always sensing and kind of shaping that at the same time. And that keeps me on track so that I don't go on that Ah, I'm going here today. Oh, that was really interesting. All these amazing things happen. I'm going to follow some of those things and get completely distracted. I, I, I find it extremely important to have this creative track that I'm on, which has a lot of surprises in it, as any creative process does, and is, it is inspired all the way along. And there's a lot of new that comes all the time but there's also a consistency of showing up. And I think this is one of the skills of courage actually, is to also consistently show up in a particular direction until, you know, at, and actually create something, actually do something that produces genuine I, benefit. Yeah, and over time, I, I think you, you gain the skills of discernment to know, you know, when you're moving in a direction and additional things emerge, which may be breadcrumbs that could lead down one path and choosing, you know, so, so is that the path that's related to this initial direction or is that a distraction and, or how do I then, you know, sidebar archive that to consider later if it felt important enough. And there's a, there's a deep level of discernment, um, however that occurs to you, I often get guidance and, you know, both sensory experiences, inputs, and also, you know, some psychic capacity that helps me make sense of things. But I'm using all of those indicators to say, oh, no, I'm still going this direction. And those are, I think those are important. Maybe they're for someone else, <laughs> you know, I'm never sure exactly why they appeared in my purview. Um, and so the discernment is something that you can practice and using all of your, you know, your sort of bodily senses and then also your sort of extrasensory capacity that comes on with time learning to listen as you gain more and more subtle awareness. I, I think courage, open heartedness is is really amplified when we can trust that we're moving in the right direction because of those senses and the indicators that is available to us well, so for, it's just like i have a really big sword and a great and a great um shield, shield. And an army behind me you know which okay now i'm feel good now i can trudge forward and kill the enemy it's like i'm depending on my sensory and transpersonal capacity to guide me. I don't, you know, I, it's it's kind of like my own army moving forward. That's terrible. Well, then we have that, that. Well, yeah. So, so then we build the the um, the intangible army, so to speak, the um, all the, the subtle support that is real. And also um, it attracts people who want to help over time. Time is a really important thing in this. I, I think of my experience and how often I felt like, oh, it's, things are not happening quick enough. I'm not, I'm not skillful enough. But if I look back and I look at how much I've learned in as long as soon as I started to be patient and gave it time and didn't expect like I want it today. So I need to have it by tomorrow. But 
this is a really important skill that I'm learning. And if it takes a couple of years to get reasonably good at it, that's fine. Because we can learn in today's world, it's like, oh, just learn this thing and you can have all these results. And, and, and we're used to a very fast pace of learning. But I feel that many of the skills we need for this future that we are moving into and shaping and influencing, they take longer to learn. These are real skills. There's mastery involved. This is more like an apprenticeship that that's an, continues to emerge. And therefore, there are years involved in learning these things. But every step you take towards it is another step in developing that mastery. And if you don't take those steps, then you you lose that opportunity. So it's just really worth being aware of that. You know, I love I love what you just said. And I was um, I was thinking about about, you know, and as as children, um, you know, when we take on let's just a new sport, um, if I were to have a deep desire to learn to play tennis, I wouldn't expect to pick up the skills capacity to be a good tennis player, a professional tennis player in a short period of time. And for some reason, we are, you know, we generally writ large are so impatient that as the world shifts and life shifts and I want to move in a new direction, we think, oh, I should be able to do that very quickly. And when I think about, you know, now like two decades, it's taken me to have a, the awareness that it's still growing, still un unfolding this, uh, this subtle capacity and awareness to sense what what is in my environment and how to follow it or not and how to make these discernments that allow me to be courageous you know courageous is not something ju that just happens because you open your heart and you show up and oh looky there i'm able to take step it's like i i now have enough confidence you know so confidence is a part of courage i have enough confidence that i can read the data that are in front of me and make discerning decisions that this step will be worthwhile. I may not succeed like I imagine. I may fail, but I, I can figure out why that happened and do it again differently. Or maybe that wasn't the step. Maybe it was right here and I was off five degrees. So courage, regardless of what kind of courage it is, big or small c, requires a level of confidence in my discernment skills that I can use to make decisions to know that that step's going to produce something useful. And, and then people start to respect and listen to you. I remember the time when I, I could see things and nobody listened to me. <laughs> that, you know, that just feeling of utter powerless. It's like, can't you see what you're doing? And you can feel angry or you can feel frustrated and all of these things, but I just couldn't command the attention of another person. That's really interesting to see that changing. I think that also takes time, but it's worthwhile taking the time for it. Because once people start to listen to you and really listen, mm -hmm. then you start to be able to work with people to create outcomes at a completely different level. And that's been a very exciting development for me in a way before I think I could create outcomes because I was a good coach. And so I listened to people and they listened to me in a way. Now I'm seeing there came a time where people started to realize that my input into a business, for example, um, is so critical to the business that it becomes an actual part of the functioning of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, that I don't think it was like that some years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing to see because it's in a way it's a dream. I 30 more, more than 30 years I've dedicated, really dedicated to learning about and standing for this energetic knowledge and understanding and ability to to work with life and change people's outcomes you know in the end if you learn about healing you're learning how to change the outcome of a person's illness in a way that they're not otherwise able to access if you learn about healing relationships healing our relationship with money all the kind of daily work that i've done over all of these years what i'm learning is how to change the outcomes and when you start to be able to bring that 
into a business in partnership with other people at a, at a level where that knowledge is as valuable as the knowledge of you know strategy or it becomes part of the strategy that's i just i really want to say that that is an amazing thing to happen in terms of the kind of fulfillment of the years that we put in often especially coaches um, and people who mentor and help and teach I heard somebody say the other day, maybe we're doomed to be educators for the rest of our life. He was talking about people who are trying to influence the direction that things are going. I thought, what an interesting expression, we're doomed to be educators. <laughs> and I remember the moment when I made the decision that I needed to be more than an educator, I needed to be a doer. Mm -hmm. I needed to actually do, create stuff. And often these days I have the words in my mind, be the solution, Sarah. Don't actually be create a solution that enables other people to do the kind of business they want to do in the way they want to do it don't just go and teach the principles teach those anyway but actually make a solution because some of these some of these problems haven't been solved yet i agree i just so much that you say that resonates with me i mean i, I left academia 20 years ago 20 ugh, oh my god almost 30 years ago that's scary um, um, because, you know, like I could have studied things ad nauseum for decades and, you know, written papers and, and, uh, maybe be, you know, considered laudable, have a laudable career, but what would I have done in the world, you know, like I, and, and so creating things based on what we understand and know to be true and are able to influence people but you know at this point creating systems and processes that can impact more and more people feels like a really important and courageous step forward for those of us who can um, because we've been practicing long enough that it no longer feels out of out of the realm of possibility I, I feel like anything is possible at this point just given you know the life experience that we have um and then i would love to invite academics into this so that their work becomes really useful but i think in many cases they need to change the way they do it because yeah, the kind I, of research we need now is radically different from a lot of what's going on yeah. um in the mainstream and and it needs to change quickly otherwise it's really clear like we will create our own research i'm already looking at how can i start to invest in the research that i think needs to be done because i, I think that the the old system would respond too slowly and it would take too long and uh, it still needs to be done properly but so so that's really interesting because then then it influences so many other things we start to influence um, the way that many things are done in the world through the businesses that we create. Well, and I, I mean, I think that's why my work is effective because I am a scientist and I have studied the various methods that I've used and created a model based on that that I've then again tested and iterated and rebuilt and reformulated. And, you know, now it's kind of a no brainer um, when I implement it. And I think that, I, I mean, you know, to your point, I, absolutely, we have to collect data about what we're doing in order to see if it works to be in the moment able to refine our approaches significantly if needed. And, and that takes courage too in saying, oh, this little thing right here, that's not working so well. How can I fix that? I thought it was fundamentally right, but nope it's not working, it's not doing its in intended job and I need to do something differently or better or find somebody who knows how to do that better. Um, I mean, I, I think it's, you know, it's experimentation, it's creating feedback loops and that are safe to learn and safe to fail. And, and we're just, we're, we're creating, we're innovating in very different ways that we used to which requires that moment to moment discernment and courage, open heart, open mind, open will as Otto Scharmer talks about so that I can allow what is intending to emerge right here, right now to show up and be a part of the solution. 
Um, in a way, it's very ordinary, and in a way, it's very fun. It's nice to be less instituted <laughs> and to be less controlled. It's really nice to have this sense of aliveness and and um, needing to be very awake and very responsive and creative at the same time. And you know, I, I feel like it's an enormous privilege to be alive right now because we have this opportunity to be so radically experimental and at one level anything goes it's up to you in a way that probably was always true but it was definitely not it was definitely not easy and it was definitely not likely whereas now I feel a freedom and the urgency helps to give us that freedom it's like well if it's urgent you can throw all the rules out and let's go and find real solutions. And so I, I think that it's really beautiful actually to arrive at this rather ordinary moment of courage, which is simply part of where we are right now. It's for everybody. I really think it's for everybody. Um, it's, it's an antidote to apathy and powerlessness. Um, it's an antidote to blame and um, making other powerful forces, institutions, organizations, people, whatever you perceive uh, responsible for everything so you're not responsible for anything. That those moments of courage are a path out of that powerlessness and into a world where you, each one of us gets to choose much more consciously the experience that not only are we creating for ourselves but we're contributing to each other. And that draws out our responsibility and the sharing of our experience together and then that draws out community um, it starts to draw out all the components of a of a much more beautiful life right and so we're back to the kind of what i said earlier is like really i don't know is this whole this whole thing designed for us to find joy and love and <laughs> belonging <laughs> because we can't we can't do any of it the old way and the new way where we're all, you know, figuring it out, experimenting, discerning, open hearts, courage together is going to create the ultimate outcome of just this joyful, alive, awakened, um, collective life that is kind of the ultimate goal of being human anyway, right? I mean, we didn't... And, and I would bring creativity into that because I think there is, for many of us, there's a very strong drive to create something or to, you know, there's the doing part as well, which is really important. Uh, um, yeah, we, I we, we need to make a contribution to each other. And if, and if we can do that in a way that is joyful for us, I always think about supposing we really saw in business that our role is to add to the beauty and goodness and joy, let's say, or pleasure of the world. How would our supermarkets be? I mean, would we even have supermarkets? How would our shopping work? If, if that's genuinely what we saw was the purpose of business, mm -hmm. how would we do it differently? And I love that question because you start to think about everything differently and it would solve an awful lot of things very quickly and just it's like well it would be joyful and pleasurable for the business owner and for the team and for the clients for everybody you just make different decisions it's a very simple question that we can ask and um, it can brings together that state of being and the community and the joy and all of that and it brings it brings that together with the things that we do and the ways that we contribute to each other's quality of life mm -hmm. Well, it's good to have the courage to choose a direction that is that attracts us, that draws us towards it, that makes us feel more and more full and whole. Um, it makes us feel like, oh, I'm the right person. I'm in the right place at the right time in the right life. And this is a this is a really beautiful place to be. Yeah. That's have the courage for that feels worthwhile it's enlivening and enlivening enough to cause me to want to be truly present and available regardless regardless you know just whatever shows up i'm here i'm i am alive and ready and um and and having fun doing it that's just you know i think that's got to be our new way 
Beautiful. Thank you very, very much, Holly. I have so enjoyed these three conversations that we've had together um, and uh, the exploration of them. And I'm very grateful to you for showing up in them. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Sarah. It's been fun.